just about time whenever you're ready to do Okay. Do we start? Do you have an announcement? Uh, we'll do all of that before the main service, bro. So okay, so just whenever you're ready, right go ahead and head up. saved, always saved. Amen. Amen. They try to make you feel like that's some kind of a bad saying. I mean, I love that. Once saved, always saved. Amen. Amen. Washed in the blood, you know, you can't fall out of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can't fall into hell. <laughs> and uh, it's exciting. We believe in dispensations. I see you do. You got all these charts. I have that book there. I don't know where to put that thing. You know, it's so big. But it's just, you, you can see, I see Brother Kim's mind. I see you have a good pastor. Amen. I see you have a very organized church right in the heart of Berkeley, right in the heart of California, is a little nodule, a little community of Bible-believing <laughs> soldiers for Christ. Yeah. And it's and I see you walk out, you got a little a garden there, you can get out and get some air, like King Ahab's or Eric. Remember he went out and got hot-headed, you know, you go cool off back yeah. there. You got a little Bible library here. The devil hates that library. That's, one of, that's a great library there. Amen. It's exposing the enemy. It's got a few young men. Get a hold of some of those books. Read. Study. To show thyself approved unto God. Yes, sir. And Pastor Kim, you can see his labor. He loves the Lord. Amen. Amen. I, I'm, I'm sorry he's not here, but uh, I, am, I am honored to be able to speak in his behalf and teach today and fill the pulpit. So without further ado, let's all stand and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Let's honor the Lord this morning. Father, we want to come before you this morning, uh, Lord, with thanksgiving. Uh, we want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for your goodness and kindness and abundant mercy. We thank you, Lord, that every one of us is able to stand up and get out of bed. We're able to uh, fight the good fight. We have the we have weapons to fight the fight. We have the protection of God, the almighty uh, wings of God are above us and below us, Lord. You, you have us in your hand. We are part of your hand. We thank you for that, Lord, that we are able to worship with one mind and spirit and truth this morning with like-minded believers that love the word. We pray, Lord, you would meet with us. Father, give me uh, the sense. Lord, give me the understanding of the scripture. Help me, Lord, to edify your people. Yeah. And help me, Lord, to be a blessing to this Bible-believing church right here in uh, Berkeley, California. Bless us. Look down upon us, Lord. May your eye be upon us and bless the Sunday school hour in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, before we get into the slides, I'll show you a little bit of what we've done over the last 30 years. Me and my wife have been married 31 years, and it's been a wild ride. We're, we're just getting started. Unless the 
Lord comes and interrupts it. I won't be too upset. Amen. There's nothing Amen. too important down here that I'm holding on to. And Jesus comes, I'll just be glad to get out of here. Amen. Amen. I there's nothing unfinished, man. I don't, there's nothing I want to do down here that's that important. <laughs> so look in Colossians chapter 3. We're going to look at Ukraine this morning. We're going to look at what's going on in that part of the world. You study your Bible, it tells you where all the sons of Noah went. And the, we're, uh, we're a mixed crowd here. We have Shemites in here. We have Hamites and we have Japhethites all in one room. These were all the sons of Noah. And uh, America's a melting pot. But uh, the closest ones are the, are the Orientals here, the Koreans, the Japanese, Chinese. You're closer to the Jews. You have the same lineage as Shem. American Indian. They say, I don't believe in the white man's God. You're closer to the white man's God than the white man is. That's just a cop out. They're, they're, God, they're close to the Shemitic race. They come across the Aleutian Islands down into the Americas. They're from the line of Shem. And so they're close to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. More than us Japhethites, we were out there and, you know, chopping, you know, meat on a tree stump in some place in Germany, you know, in the dark woods. We were, we were heathen out there. And uh, so we were far from God, the Japhethites. And so God, uh, God, but God used it. We're the, you know, the Bible says that uh, Japheth shall dwell in the tents of Shem. So this land of America is the land of Shem. And what happened was uh, Columbus comes over and he dwells in the tents of Shem. The, the Bible has all this history. Wow. It'll answer every question about what's wrong with the human race and the Tower of Babel. Languages aren't. People boast of their language. That's just the result of sin. Okay. There's only one true language. It's Hebrew. Yeah. I mean, when God, he says he spoke to him in the Hebrew tongue. I mean, Jesus spoke to Paul. I mean, if you're going to want to say there's a pure language, it's Hebrew. Amen. All these other languages are just, it's just division. Come on. And it, the, the devil tries, and that's why we have to speak tongues. We have to learn tongues now to reach the world with the gospel. Because these are barriers. It's hard. Languages are barriers. It divides people. And that was due to the man's willfulness to build a tower. Right. And so we're, look, we're looking at nations this morning. We're going to look at Ukraine. That's a Japheth people. There are Shemites there. A lot of Jews live in Ukraine. If you know anything about the pogroms. 150 years ago, they were persecuted there, and they fled to Europe, and a lot of them were killed. And, uh, and so we're going to see some, some things with the Jewish people. Uh, Ukraine is a, a friend of Israel right now. You know, there's a lot of yeah. Jews in Israel, and they're helping Ukraine. Russia is anti-Semitic in a lot of ways, yeah. and that's Gog and Magog. So uh, the Bible speaks of the Jews where? Look in Colossians, I mean the, the Ukrainians in Colossians 3.11. You may not know it, but these people who settled in the west of the Urals, the Ural were the Caucasian, the Caucasus Mountains, were called Caucasians. Mm -hmm. We're white people were called Caucasians. Why? We came up through Armenia, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and kept going up there. And those are the people who were the sons of Japheth, Tubal. There's actually a river in Russia called Tubolsk. Tubal. How many of you have ever read Tubal in the Bible? Uh, Javan, Meshach, Gomer. Now, you hear these names? You read in your Bible, right? And Gog and Magog are in that list of uh, the sons of Japheth. Gog and Magog. That's Russia. And Gog and Magog are going to take a very prominent place in the last times as you read your Bible. So it behooves you to know who is Gog, who is Magog. They're actually the ones who are going to rise up at the very end of the millennium for a short moment. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Gog and Magog will draw the nations and, they'll, and God will wipe them out with fire. So you got to know who's this Gog and Magog. Who are the Scythians? The Bible says where there is neither Greek nor Jew. So these are nationalities. Yeah. Cir circumcision, that's Jewish. Nor uncircumcision, Gentiles. Barbarians, those are people out there in Germany at the time. Scythian, what is a Scythian? That's Ukrainian. That was those steeps of the Ukrainian breadbasket. And they had these people called the Cossacks later on. How I many of you ever heard of the Cossacks? Mm -hmm. And they would ride horses and they had a sword that was long and curved. Mm -hmm. And now what we do is when you, how many of you know what a sith is? I know you live in the city, but how many ever operated a sith? Oh, so that's this gentleman here. <coughs> he's, he's from the hills, man. He lived a while. <laughs> and you take a sith, right? And you work that thing and you cut the ground. 
how you cut the grass. And what it is is a long blade that's curved so you can get a nice swath of cut grass. And you have a sickle, same thing. And you know the Russians have that symbol of the sickle and the hammer crossing each other. A sickle comes from that same root word, sis, sickle. And those are the Ukrainian people, why it's a wheat fields. And they would use those swords on one hand to cut the grain and harvest. And then if they had to go to battle, jump on their horse and they'd use that sword uh, to fight. And so Paul says there's neither Scythian in Christ. So these nationalities don't matter in Christ. There's no difference, amen? amen. But you, gotta, you should know your roots. You should know your history. You can reach people that way. Know your Bible. The Bible is a great education on history of man. Amen? There's Amen. no greater history book. There's no greater, uh, what do you call it, anthropological record. Yeah. No greater, <laughs> yeah, that was, man, I got you there, brother. That was a $5 word. That was, uh, an anthropos, man. Study of man in Greek. So, hey, I'm throwing some Greek out there. Sorry, brother. <laughs> Sorry, I'm God. a Bible believer. Don't, don't fault me for that. Come on, loosen up some of you guys. Yeah. Yeah. sit on that side. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to study the Bible, amen? Yeah. Good to be up this morning. Got your mind going? Maybe we should do some jumping jacks. Get the blood going. <laughs> get your black brains going. All right, let's turn to Jeremiah. You say, what Jeremiah? Jeremiah chapter 1. God's telling Jeremiah, I want you to know something right off the bat. This is something that's going to be the last days. I want to give you a little prophecy test. I want to see if you can cut the mustard. I want to see if you can make it as a prophet. So I'm going to give you a couple, you know, exams. Tell me what you see. You know, how many of you, when you wake up, you had a dream, right? And then you, if you wait 10 seconds, man, it's like, what was that dream? And then all the details float away. You ever have that happen? Yeah. And the Lord's saying, I want you to remember your dream, and I want you to tell me what you saw. And so you go here, and it says, um, <clears throat> chapter 1. And he, he wants them to, to, to uh, see a prophet, uh, see a dream. And he says, uh, what do you see? And the first thing is, uh, where's the first one there? Verse 11, more of the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? Yeah. And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Now, that's Israel. That's that rod that budded, remember? Mm -hmm. And uh, Joshua, uh, I mean, you got Joshua and they all had their own rods, and his was the only one that budded. That's a picture of the living tree, the rod of Israel. And you can't snuff out Israel. Even if it's cut off, even if it's a rod, it's amazing. It still has juice in it. The, you know, something looks like it's a dead stick, and the thing buds. People think Israel's dead. Two thousand, almost 2,000 years, 1948. Truman, his friend, what was his mind, Weissman? Uh, they were old haberdashery friends, a Jewish guy, or I can't remember his name, I think it was. He uh, told Truman, hey, recognize Israel. And yeah. America was the first country to recognize Israel. Yeah. You know why you're living in such comfort? And why Come you on. enjoy driving down asphalt roads with lights on at night and driving over bridges and not having this, you know, I know this city's not perfect, right, where you have all this mass. Yeah. But you have a nice situation. You live Amen. in a country where you, it's a luxurious country because you take care of the Jews. Because this country has been friends to Israel. That's right. I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse them that curse thee. Mm -hmm. And so he says, the first test to Jeremiah is, what seest thou? That's, a, that's Israel. Okay? And then the Lord said unto me, okay, you passed the test. That was good. Let me give you another one. And he says, thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. And so he said, perform it? He just saw a rod and it had uh, it was a, a rod of an almond tree. It didn't say much about it, but he he, there's details in there. Yeah. And scripture was scripture. You say, there wasn't much in there. What, what, perform what? What did you say you were going to perform? You study all scripture, you start seeing what he's talking about. Wow. Israel's going to be restored in the last days. This is last day stuff right here in Jeremiah chapter 1. He said, that's the most important thing in all the scriptures. All these prophecies, 95% of them are talking about the day of the Lord. When right. Jesus Christ comes back and destroys his enemies, and delivers Israel out of the hand of their enemies when they're surrounded. That's the focus, the prime focus of the whole Bible amen. is the second coming. Yeah, the first coming is important, amen. Without Christ dying for us, we wouldn't have a second coming. Yeah. But more scripture and more prophecy talks about him coming as a reigning king yes. 
and about his kingdom and about him establishing his throne in Jerusalem and all the world has to come up and worship him. It's all through the Bible. Amen. 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 That's the primary focus of your Bible. It's not about you. It's not about your son right. getting saved. It's about his son and his son reigning upon the throne. And you imagine there's a bunch of uh, nincompoops out there saying it. I'm being polite. You know, <laughs> They, they believe that they're called preterists. How many ever heard of a preterist? Yeah, yeah. Raise your hand high. Yeah. Okay, preterism teaches that Jesus already came back and established his kingdom. Right. How long ago do you think he did that? What yeah. year? 70, 70 AD, <laughs> whenever the temple was destroyed. And Jesus set up his kingdom. Did you know that? He's already reigning. He's reigning through you, the church. See, that's, that is replacement theology. He gets, right. They get rid of Israel yeah. and the prophecies throughout all scripture and say, that's you. You're, Jesus is reigning now through the church. And, and it's amillennialism. Yeah. How many ever heard of amillennialism? It doesn't believe in a thousand year reign of Christ. It does away with his physical, literal, visible kingdom on earth. And they allegorize all these things. To where nothing in the book of Revelation is going to happen. It's already happened, most of it, through different events. You can pick and choose whatever you want. You know, Pope Gregory was the seventh head of the, of the Red Dragon, you know. And you just make whatever you want. It, don't, it doesn't make sense. No, every eye shall see him. Wow. No event, nobody ever wrote anything. Jesus came back in 78. He, no eye saw him. When he comes back, make no mistake. The world will tremble. The world will know when he comes back. There will be no delusion then. It will be fear. And they will cry for the rocks to fall upon them. They, when they see him, it will be a terrible day. It will be a dark day. A day of clouds. So he says what? What does he say to you see now? And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot. Man, something's boiling. It's hot. It's dangerous. Hey, you don't want to get around a boiling pot of water, right? I mean, that scares you, right? You see that water boiling, starts bubbling over the edges. Seething pot. That's, that's, a, that's a dangerous thing. And the face thereof is toward the north. So he says, which way do you look and see this thing? Face north. It's from the north, this pot. What's coming from the north? All through prophecy, you got get Gog and Magog in the north. And they're going to come into the pleasant land. All through scripture, the king of the north, the king of the north. And he's going to come down from Russia. Russia hates Israel. Russia's going to attack Israel. Russia's doing things right now to prepare the world for the Antichrist too, but in a different way. The, the Europeans, there's three major groups in the book of Revelation. The ten kings of Europe, Russia, the Gog and Magog of the north, and then the kings, your people, uh, the kings of the east. <laughs> Those are the Chinese. I'm not saying you're Chinese, but I'm saying those Eastern nations. There's going to be 200 million soldiers crossing the Euphrates River coming to attack wow. Israel. It's in Revelation. Yeah. There wasn't even 200 million people in 70 AD. Yeah, Sorry, dude. It <laughs> don't add up. Come on. I didn't even put that in my plan. You know, I'm just saying your numbers <laughs> don't add up. It adds up now. They got 200 million soldiers in China. I'll guarantee it. They're ready to come over there. And attack Israel. Because Israel is going to be like Joseph. What did Joseph have? What, he had wisdom from God to tell Pharaoh to do what? Store up all the food. Store up all the food. Yeah. Feed the world. Yeah. They're going to bring on a plan, uh, pandemic again that's so worldwide. The Antichrist is going to use that. He's going to store up all the food. And the Israel's or Judas or Joseph is going to tell them how they can do it. They'll make a, they'll make a covenant. Oh, wow. With the Antichrist for one yeah. week, and they'll say, You can build your temple, give me all that technology, and we will control the world with food. There's nothing greater than food. Ukraine, you see what they did? Russia was cutting off those ships yeah. to feed Africa. There's yeah. the food. When you control the food, you control the people. Yeah. Neither will neither buy nor sell. If you don't take the mark of the beast, you can't eat. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you can't eat, man. You'll do just about anything. Yeah. But if you're in the tribulation, you, you can't love your life under the death if you're going to get saved. It's going to be a hard tribulation. Thank God we're going up before that. Amen. Amen. Because they won't be able to eat. And the devil will control the food. The ten kings of Europe will have that technology. And they will do some things where the world will come down like Jacob had to come down to Egypt. And they had nothing to eat. And they, and they bow down before Joseph. And then he revealed himself. 
But that stuff's going to happen. That's a tribulation picture where Jesus shows up in the mid-tribulation, reveals himself to his brothers and said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. This is something to that effect. So the Lord will come back and deliver Israel in the middle of that famine. Three and a half years, remember, Elijah? We're getting yeah. some Bible here. Maybe I'm get way over. But man, there's so much in the Bible. You're looking, we're getting ready for that. Yeah. Moses was a thing to get people. How far will you go? What will Americans sell their soul for? Come on. How much can we control the masses? That's what Hitler did. Control the thought. Stalin, Lenin. Don't you think that's going to happen? Mehmet Sedan. These people controlled the masses through threats, through control, and saying, peace and safety. We have to take care of <coughs> peace and safety. we got to keep martial law. We have to do this for your safety. You know, don't you hate that when they say, you know, uh, you got to put on your receipt belt because we're concerned for your safety. There's so many things like that. I get in all the time. They say, um, I go into a, a Ross store and they, they put a strap in and they said, you can't go in yet. We just have to only have so many people in the store. We'll do that for your safety. But, you know, everything's about control of numbers of people for your safety. Peace and safety. That's what the Bible says in the Bible. When they shall say peace and safety, then what? Sudden destruction shall come upon them. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 in, in the context of the Antichrist. So what does he see? He sees a seed being plucked from the north, and the face thereof is toward the north. Then the Lord said unto me, Out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. Below I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, saith the Lord, and they shall come, and they shall set everyone his throne at the entering of the gate, gates of Jerusalem, and against all the walls thereof round about, and against all the cities of Judah. That's kind of come. And uh, there's, there's a day coming where, what is Russia doing now? Stirring up a seething, boiling pot. Put the fire under the pot. The Lord's doing this. I love Ukraine, and I hate to see what's going on in Ukraine. But I rejoice to know that we, we get closer. There are certain things happening because of that war. That's joining the, okay, look at Europe. Let's go to another scripture. Uh, look at Zephaniah. Look at Zephaniah. Let me get to my notes. All this is without notes. I, I do that all the time. You don't know where we're going to go. Look at, look at Zephaniah. My wife, where's that at? 3 8. Okay, Zephaniah is after. Anatoly. Two. Uh, that sure did make it throw you off a little more. You got to know your little, those minor prophets are tough, right? They nestled in there between Habakkuk. All right, Zephaniah 3. And what do we see since the last two wars, World War I, World War II, is coming to World War III? We're getting ready for World War III. World War I, you know, you know history. Lord Balfour went to the Parliament, got the decree signed and approved by the Parliament to give the land to Israel. 1917. 1918, the Bolshevik Revolution, things changed in the world. But Israel, they don't want to go back to their land. World War I was to give them the land, but they, they refused to go back. Why would we go to that wilderness? We're living good up here in Germany and Holland. We're living good here. In uh, Poland, we're living good. We're making money with diamonds, gold industry, merchandise, traders. Jews are living good. 1930s, right? Pops up this little brown shirt. This little squat little weirdo. Mm -hmm. Thinks he's an artesian living down in the East Village, you know. <laughs> Look at his whatever. Yeah. Hitler. Yeah, he was an artistic guy. Watch out for that stuff sometimes. It attracts a certain crowd, you know. And uh, here's Hitler, a little pervert. And he starts coming into power. What's he? Hates the Jews. Hates the chosen people. And so he brings them and puts them in gas chambers in World War II. What happens after World War II? They get on boats called the Exodus. And they flee Europe. And they go and they go back to their land. So World War II was to drive the Jew back into their homeland. World War III is going to cause them to return to their state. All that didn't bring them to their knees. All that caused them to become atheists and people like Chuck Schumer and, and Bernie Sanders types and all the comedians. You ever notice how many comedians are Jewish? They're trying to mask a, a, a sorrow, mask a loneliness, a departure from their God. They're trying to act happy when they have no real joy. Adam 
Sanders and all these, all these, you go down the list, man, uh, you know, Mel Brooks and uh, the, the old, old Soupy Sales, all these old, I mean, you name one after, I can give you 200 people like, uh, you know, no respect, man, no respect, yeah. but Robbie Dangerfield, Jew after Jew after Jew, you ever realize, what is that? Why, why? They have certain DNA that they're funny? <laughs> no, they come back to America after World War II angry at God for doing that to them. Why would you do that to us, God, the chosen people, after we worshipped you and because you still refuse to come to your Messiah? And I had to put you in ovens. He said it in Ezekiel. He said, I'm going to burn you in ovens for your rejection of my word of me. And he did that to them. It wasn't Hitler, but God used Hitler. So God, God uses Russia. He's going to use Putin. He's going to use the ten kings of Europe, whichever ones they are. I don't know which ten countries, but I kind of have my list. That's not important. It would be ten for an hour. One hour, they would give their power to me. Yeah. We're getting so close to more. Yeah. Why? Yeah. NATO, they, what did Trump complain about? You're not giving your money. Yeah. Now they are building war machines. Yes. They are going back to a war mentality. France is talking about sending soldiers to Ukraine. Uh, Germany's on board now with France. Now you're uniting Europe. What has happened with Putin with this crossing the line into Ukraine? He has united Europe's military might. That's right. Did you notice that is happening? Yeah, Macron. With the Dutch and the Swedish, they, they brought the Swedes into NATO. They brought the Finns into NATO. That just happened. Yeah. Prophecy is being yeah. fulfilled. We won't even get to our missionary who we are and where we are today, okay? <laughs> That's for next, next time. <laughs> Isn't this good stuff? Amen. Aren't you glad you're on the right side? Yes, sir. Aren't you glad you're not duped by the ten kings? And America's always been a foreigner to their saddle, though. Because we don't, we have our guns. Out of my dead, cold hands. No, we're not giving up our second amendment. They don't want, they want to, they want a passive nation that they can control like all those Europeans. Nobody has guns over there. I think the Swiss do. Oh, the Swiss. They don't, they got the money and the gold and they stuff. They're neutral. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, they're holding on to Putin's money and everyone's money. Yeah. And he's like exactly. undisclosed bank accounts. Whatever. Uh, there's, they're part of the <laughs> Ten Kings. They're the bank. They're the, like Judas Iscariot. They hold the bag. <laughs> don't trust the Swiss. You know, you go to the Vatican when you see there, the Swiss Guard. What's the, what's the army of the Swiss doing down in the Vatican City? Yeah. Come on, here. Did you ever see that? Anybody see them? And they're yeah. red and yellow, and they're, they got poofy hats, and they got a big, one of those uh, double-bladed uh, axes. What do you call those? Uh, the ha uh, Habergian or whatever? Halberd. Who said? How do you say that? Halberd. Halberd, yeah, okay. So they, they stand there, you know. It's just a side note. I got to go to the Vatican one time. I was 19 and Grace Sauter when I was in the Navy. And we handed out tracts all through the Vatican. And we ran out of tracks, and I said, Ray, what are we going to do now? And meanwhile, all the old ladies are kissing the toe of Peter, you know, trying to bite a piece of it off to take home. You know, the Catholics. I was a Catholic, so I could talk bad about the Catholic people. And uh, I was Italian. I'm no longer Italian. But, uh, <laughs> I renounced that part of my life. I'm a Scotchman now. But uh, I'm 100% Jewish, so hey, man, you got you to treat me good, okay? No matter what, do not curse me, no matter what you do. Sense over the tide. I'm, I'm on the right side. I spit in a little bottle. I got it back from whatever, you know. Whatever it is. So, anyways, hey, mate, what are we going to do? Because we're going to sing nothing but the blood of Jesus. So, I got to walk around. That was one of the highest highlights of my life, man. What can wash away my sins? I'm back in the camp, sorry. Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Right in the Vatican, man. Right in the devil's seat. Right in the seat of Satan. That, that is something, man. I can, I'm get, maybe that will be the only person that understand what can wash me and Ray. What, like a couple of minutes of boots, man, walking through the back and singing at the top of our lungs. What can wash away our sins? Yeah. And the devil didn't stop us that day. You know? Amen. He's been hating me ever since for that, but uh, I'm going to keep on keeping on. Amen. And uh, so we're in the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 8. And the Bible says, Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord. So Jeremiah passed the test just to say he got both those visions right. And what were they talking about? The last days when Russia comes down. God's going to draw the nations together. 1948, United Nations. How about that? By the way, they were first called the League of Nations. League of Nations. Yeah, that's right. 
And the United Nations what? The United Nations Assembly, there you go, all right, the United Nations <laughs> Assembly. The reason I say that is right here. It's right here, the Word. The Bible said, what, I don't know, 400 years before Christ, 2,400 years ago, he said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to build the UN. I'm going to make a charter. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day I rise up to the prey, like a lion of the tribe of Judah. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdom. That's right. To pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. So that's what God's doing. Right. The United Nations is doing. Those ten kings of Europe are going to get together for a very short time. Revelation chapter 17, verse 12 says he's going to give them power with him for one hour. And those nations are going to re give and relent their power and, and give and submit to him. And Ukraine's a part of that. Why? Ukraine is a rogue nation right now. They're not in the United They're not in the United Nations. They're not in NATO. And they're not submitting to Russia. So there's a freedom there. I'm going to tell you why Ukraine's in the place it's at. Because about 25 years ago, Russia shut the doors to all missionaries. How many of you know a missionary to Russia right now? No, there's no missionaries to Russia. Maybe somebody's doing some kind of thing, but you don't, as an American, you don't want to go to Russia, because they're going to throw you in jail and call you a spy, and they're going to hold you, and then try to get extort money from you, and get the United States government involved. Nobody's going to Russia right now. What? 130 million people are not hearing the gospel right now. The devil is like Russia. He, he, he likes to swallow up nations and keep them under false religion. And what he does that with Rome, he does that with Italy, he does that with the Philippines. He tries to keep but the Philippines gospel is being preached. But there's nations like he keeps them under darkness of religion. So Ukraine has freedom like you never saw before. I, I mean, kids can take Bibles to school. How many of your kids can take a Bible to school with, a, with no problem? Man, they, they, they'll sue you. They say separation of church and state. In America, we have these battles to fight. Amen. That's why there's a Christian law association fighting day and night to get kids to be able to take, even take a Bible or pray in school. The only time they pray in school is when there's a mass shooting going on. You know, you're not allowed to pray otherwise. You know, Lord, help save me. <laughs> but there's no prayer in school, no Bible in school in America. Ukraine, I preached in the prisons. I preached to the military. Amen. We used to have milk. When I preached, they'd come down and get down on their knees and ask Christ to save them. I preached in the school. So the director of the school said, bring Bibles. We'll gather all the kids up. And we gave everyone a New Testament. And preached the Bible to them. Who wants to trust me? He's a great man. Glory there's God. liberty there. So the yeah. devil says, I'm going to shut that liberty off. And I'm going to use Russia to come in and swallow them up and keep stop that missionary endeavor. And all these missionaries, Bardwell and Higgins and Demopolis and, uh, and Brother w w Wiles and all these people you have going over to Ukraine, preaching the word and starting churches. And, and they're going out now from Ukraine to other nations, Russia and Belarus, and trying to spread the gospel. That's why this is happening primarily. The devil hates that liberty. He hates your liberty. He hates America. He hates that you're sending out these missionaries to all parts of the world. He wants, that's why God has not bank, uh, bankrupt Wall Street yet. And why you have a nice 401k on. and some stock and some IRAs and some trust funds and some money put away. On, and that you're doing really good because you thought, oh, man, you, know, you got some gold maybe or some silver. Or maybe you got nothing, but whatever. You still got a nice full belly and you got food in the cupboard. Amen. Right. Because uh, we have sent out missionaries. Amen. And we're going to continue sending out missionaries as long as the Lord lets us Amen. to preach the word. Two reasons you are not sitting in squalor is we have taken care of the Jews and because we're sending forth missionaries into the ends of the earth. Okay. Amen. Keep doing those two things. And God's going to overlook a lot of our blights and our sins and our warts in this country. And we got plenty of that. Amen. Amen. That's Keep good. on praying. Ukraine is fighting for their lives spiritually. Physically, why? Because the gospel's been preached throughout. I mean, we went out with gospel tents, preached all over the place. What, what time is it? How much time do we have? What time is it? You got to about eleven thirty, brother. What time is it? And right now it is eleven oh five. Oh wow, we got twenty five minutes. Glory. <laughs> I don't go for hours. <laughs> go to Ezekiel thirty eight. Let me give you another interesting thing. You say. 
maybe it's 30 years away, the Lord's coming. The Bible says there's going to be one of the signs of time is scoffers. Yeah. Saying, where is this yeah. promise? Well, it's it's coming. Coming. You're going to hear that. You're going to get some new doctrine. You're going to get some people getting your eyes off waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. Waiting, what? For the Resident. coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said that several times. Right. He said, yeah, looking for that blessed hope. That's what you're looking for. Hey. We don't need to see a red heifer anywhere. I'm not, I don't care. I don't need to see something with my eyes. And God's not going to let you see something with your eyes. You don't need to have a piece of the metal bar or a piece of the cross. We're not prophets anymore. But we walk by faith, not by sight. You're not going to get any visual sign. You have to read the Bible and believe it, that that is happening. And put together the, the scriptures and say, I see it by faith, Lord. I believe Russia's Gog and Magog. I believe the ten kings are ready in Europe. I believe the kings of the east are going to come over and pour into Israel. I believe your word, Lord. Yeah. Amen. That's what we're doing here this morning. Amen. You're looking with scripture upon scripture, line upon line, precept upon precept. Isaiah, what is that? Isaiah 59, I believe. And that's how you study the scriptures. Yeah. You grow as a Christian. This book is how you see things. Okay. Right. How, you, how you see the world. Because if you look at the world, you say, that guy looks like me. He's in the grocery line. and he has, He's playing with his child. He looks like a nice guy. What's the difference between him and me? You know what I'm saying? Do you ever get those weird thoughts like, he's going to hell if he's not saved. But he looks like a nice guy. He doesn't go to the work. He doesn't kill anybody, steal. or Well, he probably does. But the devil will get you thinking like that because you're looking with your eyes. Yeah, we walk yeah. by faith, not by sight. Yeah. We believe Israel is the nation of God's people. We don't believe these Amen. churches that say we are. That's what Israel's done. They say Isaiah 53 isn't about the Messiah. It's yeah. about us. Yeah. That's what man always likes to do. Yeah. Ye shall be as God. Yeah. So what does Israel do with Isaiah 53 with such a clear-cut scripture about his servant shall be marred more than any man, Isaiah 52. Yeah. He says... Uh, you know, he shall grow up as a, out of a, as a root out of a dry ground and all this stuff. He shall be taken out of prison. And, uh, he, I, he, uh, he, the Lord says, um, he's like, when he, I shall make his soul an offering for sin. What does he say about that? It's a light for me. Mm -hmm. And Israel says, that's Israel. Mm -hmm. No, that's the man of sorrows. Right. He shall be led as a lamb to the slaughter right. and as a, as a lamb dumb before his, her shears. So he opened not his mouth. Acts chapter 8 says that's Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, Who, whom speaketh the prophet, the style of the prophet? He said, he preached unto me, not Israel. Right. The same fallacy that the Israel fallacy, the churches today are doing by saying, that's not Jesus about this. It's about the church. The kingdom is now. We are reigning. Jesus is reigning through me. That's a lie. So we're looking at Ezekiel 38. The Israel is the nation of God. Amen. Don't be anti-Semitic. Come say, on. I am the true Israel. The church has replaced Israel. No. That's Wait. blasphemy. Yeah. Come on. God hates that. He said, that's the apple of my eye. You're touching the apple of my eye by denying them. Okay. And churches are doing that widespread today. Replacement theology, preterism, it's all millennialism. Yeah, kick that, brother. Come on. Amen. This is the doctrine of Presbyterians and Lutherans and yeah. even... These community churches, they got all kinds of names nowadays. Yeah. Trailhead, Riverside, Wellspring, yeah. Canvas, uh, you know, just anything that sounds delightful. <laughs> uh, you know, we don't need our traditional history. We don't need to know history because when men don't know history, they're doomed to repeat it. Yeah. So let's get rid of Baptists. Let's get rid of anything that's solid, traditional Bible teaching. Right. You get a lot of doctrine. It's a Sunday school. I'm pouring out a lot of stuff here because you people can handle it. Okay. You need it. You need to know your doctrine. Paul That's said right. that. You need to be able to stand here in Berkeley. You've got to know which side you stand on when it comes to the church in Israel. Good. You should get a hold of Larkin's book on rightly dividing the word church. Right. Simple book. It's great. Israel, church, and Schofield's reference Bible. Dr. Ruckman's books are going to tell you Amen. the truth about Israel. Yeah. And this Bible's telling you right here in Ezekiel 38. He says, I'm going to bring 37. He's going to breathe on the dry bones. That happened in 1948. Asia, yeah. The nation of Israel was resurrected. 
They became a nation with a flag, with money, with their own currency, shekels. They got their own Hebrew language now. They got their own territory. And it's under assault by the Hezbollah, by the PLO, by the Hamas, by Iran. Is it Iran? Yeah, right here, Ezekiel 38. Come on. Look who we're dealing with. Verse 1, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach, Tubal and Tubal, the bulls. I told you about that. That's the sons of Japheth. And prophesy against him. That's Russia. Mo Meshach is Moscow. The Russians are these people here. They're God. They want to be God. Now, that's the, the big difference in a D and a G, amen? Amen. And uh, they, who are they going to conspire with? Well, go down this read, and I will turn thee back. Okay, I will turn thee back from the north. And put hooks in thy jaws. Sounds like Leviathan, right? Over uh -huh. there in Job. And I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all them clothed with all sorts of armor. Even a great company with bucklers and shields, all them handling swords. Where's this long line? You should read Ezekiel 36, 37, 38, 39. There's a great deal in there about Israel being restored to dry bones, God breathing upon them. Yes. And then what happens? This assault comes down from the north. Gog and Magog from the north. And who conspires with them? Who's attacking uh, Ukraine, Russia? What are they using? They're using Shahid uh, drones. From where? Iran. Mm -hmm. Iran, right. who's, who's supplying Hamas in Gaza? Iran. The connection between Russia and Iran is right here in verse 5. Persia. Persia is Iran. They're par Farsi. Persi. Persi. Parsi. Parsi. P and F. That's the Persians. Is Iran. What is, what is significant? How many of you heard that they sent 100 missiles from Iran to attack Israel about two months ago? Did you, who, who knows that? Raise your hand. Iran, for the first time in history, the Persians attacked Israel. That has never been done in the history of man. That puts us on the map, amen? Come on. That tells you something's going on when Persia is coming against the Holy Land, against the Pleasant Land. Yeah. And Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and his hand. So now you've got to think kings are going to come against Israel. That's Germany, Georgia, Armenia, and all his bands, the house of Togermont, of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all the company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. After many days, that's the last day, always speaking about Christ's second coming, thou shalt be visited in the latter years, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. That's Israel, 1948. Look what's happening. Persia attacked Israel, just like the Bible says. And so we're, we're getting close. we got a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and take 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to go through this fast. We're in Kios. You know that. Now, this is an old picture, so this is what the boys used to look like. Oh, these are the big, this is the, I didn't delete all these. I was in the Navy. I got saved in the Navy. Amen. This is my wife's family. She's a, it's an Italian girl, Sicilian. She got saved in Brooklyn, New York. That was her church in the basement. I went to Pensacola Bible Institute after I got out of the Navy and studied under Dr. Ruckman, and we got married down there in 1993. And I went out to Ukraine. And uh, Ukraine is a land of food and hills. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of traditional dress. This is like a quick documentary. <laughs> A lot of the electric train, they don't have cars. And this is their transportation. Wow. And there's land of castles, land of orthodox wow. bastions. People would hide in the churches back in the old days when they wow. had wars and stuff. Lenin came in. And they're, this is where we used to street creep. Am I in the way? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we used to street preach here. We started right here in this big city, four million people. It's not as big as maybe, your, well, your city's about a couple million, right? These are the Cossacks. And uh, they just live old world. They're very talented people, very athletic, great boxers. They got a lot of traditional things, a lot of snow. And uh, 
they still have houses and they find out they like that. A lot of poverty. Yeah. It's a war machine. They're taking on Russia. Yeah. Two years and Russia hadn't hardly made a dent. Yeah. I mean, they're fierce fighters. They're, they love <coughs> their freedom. They fight like Americans, more even than Americans. I, I thank God for my, you know, the, this country, the men that went out and fought for our country. But those folks, they'll fight. But they're under a darkness of religion. Yeah. And then the Tsars got killed, and then comes in the Marxism. That's just coming into your city, and it's sitting right. in you. That's right. Socialism, Marxism. Yeah. I mean, across the board, they want to bring it in here. What's yours is mine. Spread the wealth, rep reparations, all those ideas. Like you worked hard your whole life, but you, who said you that's your money? It's everybody's money. Yeah. We're going to tax you to death. Yeah. <laughs> and lending comes in and gets rid of private property and, and private ownership and uh, communism. And then Stalin comes in with an iron fist. He, he changed his name. He was some kind of, I forgot what his name was in, in Armenia and in Georgia. But he's I'm a man of steel. Stahl is steel. And he killed five, he killed up to 10 million Ukrainians through starvation in 1933. Yeah, right. People who lived in poverty. I took, I mean, these are pictures of the, what's called Gullah of the Mir. Yeah. This is Bobby R. 70,000 Jews in like a week got butchered in that hole wow. in Kiev. It's a very terrible history in Ukraine. They got the pogroms, they got the Jewish people getting slaughtered there. They got Stalin killing 10 million of them there. Bringing in communism, the sickle and the hammer. Chernobyl is a result of that 70 year experiment. You want to experiment with socialism, Marxism, you will destroy America or any country. What country ever survived Marxism? <laughs> Name one, man. Where they, they, they devour the people. And all the people who are in power, they get rich and they pour all their money out in some. And what happens is drunkenness and poverty. That's like a lot of Christians. You got your sword, you know, you got your. Falling asleep. Don't get drunk in the night. You know, they that are drunk, they're drunk in the night. So keep your sword sharp. You end up drunk. But here's our, here's the orphans. Plenty of orphans. That one there is Aiden when he was a little boy in a green jacket. And then there's Colin there. Uh, tied, tied with the kid in the back, a third from the left, right. And uh, we adopted those boys out of an orphanage. There's plenty of orphans in Ukraine. And the wall came down, you all know, in 89. Uh, that changed things. I was going to go to another mission field, and I went to Dr. Ruckman, and I said, I don't think I'm going to go to Australia. I'm going to go to Ukraine. He goes, well, I thought you were going to Australia, brother. I said, well, the Lord opened the door in Ukraine. Well, make up your mind, man. Make up your mind. Quit <laughs> <laughs> flip-flopping, brother. <laughs> and I hear one of Mary Ruckman's Ukrainian babushkas, you know, and he, he, I went up to him and said, Dr. Ruckman, I'm thinking about, you know, I'd like to get married. I need some advice. Well, there are plenty of girls in the church, brother. Marry one. <laughs> Marriage counsel from Dr. Ruckman. Yeah. <laughs> Turns and walks away. I'm like, Dr. Ruckman, would you pray for me? Yeah, I'll pray for you, bro. <laughs> I got my wife in like two months, man. If you, if you guys are single, too bad. You can't ask Dr. to pray for you now. But you maybe find somebody like Brother Ken. So pray for me. I'd like to get, I'd like to get married. <laughs> this is the, the left bank of Ukraine. 19, uh, we got married in 93. We got to Ukraine a year later in 94. My wife was a very successful woman working for Oracle Corporation. Manhattan, Case University graduate, one of the first in a, in a men's fraternity. She's the first of many. And then she meets me. Everything was downhill from there. <laughs> she was going up the ladder. And then she married some guy making like eight bucks an hour down in Pensacola, Florida. The armpit <laughs> of the nation. If, if, there was a, if there was a depression in Pensacola, we'd never know about it. That's what Dr. Ruckman always said. And we started our church. First one in the Hotel Salutich. That was our first band of believers. People got saved. I got, they got baptized right in the river, the mighty river Dnieper. And then they came. They got saved. They got baptized. And then I had a crew of people. We had a gospel tent like Will Wolf said one day. I heard him on a tape. I think it was the mule walked on. He's like, why don't you just get you an old gospel tent and set it up on a vacant lot somewhere? And I said, yeah, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Ten years I was looking for a tent. Never did find one. <laughs> but when I got to Ukraine, I made a tent. And that became one of our big things. Going out to the villages, putting up that two-pole tent. Wow. And then we would go house to house. Look at all these old women. They want to hear about Jesus. Amen. They'd come up and put like five grievances on the table. But thanks that we came out. These places were four or five hour drives. The road ended in this village. There was no through road. There was no store. There was no nothing. No even street light. 
It was a pig facing us. He had a big boar one day standing in the middle of the road. I had a standoff with him. I tried to fight him. You know, get him. I fought with wild beasts in Russian overcome. <laughs> <And>, uh, <laughs> like Paul. <laughs> we get to these houses. This is Novi Padol. And we preach there. My wife was always with me. She went everywhere. We just started churches in these little villages. And that was uh, bon Bonnie and Clyde. My wife, she's a Sicilian woman. Don't ever put a gun or a knife in her hand. Watch out. This man's with the Lord. We had preachers. There's our tent. Amen. And we started putting the tent up. We started Amen. bringing the kids. And we started preaching in the tent. And uh, just great, great time. That man got saved. He's with the Lord. The leg. He was an artist. He would draw like Dr. Ruffin. He'd get up wow. there and he could preach, man. He was a heroin addict. Got saved in an old woman's house. Lydia. He left the hospital. Heard an American was in a house. I used to preach this old woman, Lydia. Just all blind and deaf. deaf. And I'd I'd yell at her. She was standing two, three feet in front of me so she could hear me preach. And I'd say, the Lord loves you, sister. You know, and she's like, you know, and I'd say it in Russian. I'd say it in Russian. All right, we're still got it going. Amen. And uh, this guy comes from the hospital and gets saved and gets off the jump. Amen. And then uh, another old woman who I was connecting with, Nadia, she says, this guy's going to the schools and telling the kids how to get off drugs. And can you buy him a winter coat? And I said, yeah. And I met this guy, and he became part of our team. Amen. What am I doing? Down arrow. And the God saved many people through his. That woman in Alexandria got saved. There's another tent we, we, we used. There's a school for spastic children. Here's the director of a school got saved. Amen. Uh, we had baptism in his village, many villages. And uh, wow. he got baptized. And he let us use an old school building for a church. Praise God. And there's, uh, it looks like, you know, I always see this. I think, man, that was me. That's like weird, man. I was like Peter Cartwright, you know. I, I was. I didn't know anymore. I lost my stuff, man. But uh, <laughs> I want to get back out there. And uh, but that's fun. That's fun, man. You don't need a church building. Yeah. There's people out there all around the world, man. If you're not doing nothing, do something, you know. Amen. Uh, that, that's a quote from me. If you're not doing nothing, do something. Uh, <laughs> this woman here was 93, and she couldn't get very far, so we baptized her in a tub in her backyard. Oh, glory then, to God. 9-11 happened. I come back home on a furlough. First furlough, eight years. Um, just wrap it up. I, uh, the, the home church, my wife, where she was in that basement church, the pastor left. He couldn't keep his job. So they said, fill in, brother. Why are you in a furlough? I said, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll fill in for a year. Uh, turned into 11 years. Um, that, so we started a new church. Eight people were there. We founded the uh, Blessed Hope Baptist Church. I turned the work over to Oleg and the men in Ukraine. And we start baptizing. Here's some Puerto Ricans. They get saved too, Puerto Ricans. Amen. Uh, Coney Island, Coney Island, New York. We baptize them. We carry one woman in a wheelchair all the way down the ocean. We had a crowd gather for that, man. You, you talk about taking somebody in the ocean in a wheelchair. Uh, that's fun, man. And then I preach the gospel to all this crowd looking at these weirdos putting a woman in the, what are they Amen. doing? They're drowning this woman? <laughs> uh, and there's the pastor. Uh, you think Brother Kim's strange. This is Eddie Freda. He's Japanese. Um, he's a, <laughs> He's the pastor of Blessed Hope Baptist Church. Amen. And you don't want to mess with the pastor. Yeah. In New, in New York. You think your folks are tough. They're tougher. But uh, he got, he got, uh, that was, he was saved, but then he got right with God. And I ordained him. Uh, look at that funny tie I'm wearing. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, and he's, this church is in, it's Blessed Hope Baptist Church in Brooklyn. That's what happened in those 11 years. Wow. Then uh, I went against all conventional codes, and everybody got mad at me, like, Brother Keel, you're inconsistent. You don't know what you're doing. I said, yeah, I'm just trying to listen to the Holy Spirit. I don't yeah, know. that's right, brother. Come on. Uh, but I started two churches in Ukraine and a church in Brooklyn, New York. So, I mean, I was going to keep going, going to keep on bumbling my way through life, I guess. Amen. Uh, I got in trouble with a lot of the brethren. I'm a black sheep. I don't care. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Because I'm going to be on the Lord's list. Amen. That's right. And the Lord said, yeah, you did what I told you to do. And then we uh, decided we needed some kids in our life. Like, we didn't have enough trouble. So uh, after 20 years, I love you, boys. I didn't mean that. I take it back. Um, 20 years of uh, just trying, you know, my wife had to go through in vitro and people asking, why haven't you had children? Like, you're some reject, you know? It's like, uh, maybe you just shut up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, stupid question. People ask stupid questions. I had one or two churches back, and they're good people, but this lady asked, you know, yeah, can anybody have a question? Um, why don't you missionaries just go, and then God will provide the money when you go? And I'm like, 
why don't you quit, you know, working and just let God feed you, you know? <laughs> I didn't say that, but I was yeah. thinking that way. A thousand dollars for one ticket to Ukraine, four thousand dollars. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. Right? I'm a self only self-made millionaires can now become missionaries, okay? Any no millionaires want to be a missionary, okay? No, you're doing too well for my millions, I get it. Um, this is Calvin. And uh, my wife met Aiden first, and he was a firecracker. This kid was jumping, he hated women. And she said, the other one was in America at the time. We were going to adopt two boys. The only one was there, and we played with him, and he was, he was crazy. He was like, she calls him the feral child. And he would climb up trees, and he, he looks better here. We must have got a haircut. But uh, <laughs> the other one was coming back to Ukraine, and she called all her friends and said, pray, because if the other one's like this one, I, I can't take it. And it's always pushing me to the max, and this is not happening. So he came back, and Colin was as gentle as a, you know, he was the total opposite of Aiden. Now they're opposite. Colin's the crazy one, and Aiden's the smart and the normal one. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to use the word smart. He's more <laughs> cool and easygoing. And so these tough boys from the Ukraine became our children. Amen. And they got saved, and uh, we raised a family for a while in Brooklyn, New York, and turned the church over to Eddie Freya. Back to Ukraine, missionary journey number two. I'm in pursuit of Paul. He said, I'm going to be a, I'm to be a pattern to them which should thereafter believe. So this is our third missionary journey. Do anyone else know? I'm trying to be like Paul. So uh, forgive me if I do it wrong. So what we did was we sold our house, made some money, bought some printing machines. They were, they weighed 40 tons. And I, through the grace of God and a friend at Genia, we printed 70 different booklets, mostly Dr. Ruckman's. And we printed most of them, 10 to 20,000 in the printing. So I don't know, add the math. That's 1,500,000 uh, booklets. And then tracks. Five surprises in hell, things like that. Yeah. Giving out tracts. We printed wow. 100,000 New Testaments, 50,000 whole Bibles. Amen. So that's, you know, and then I lost $150,000. Yeah, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Uh, Russia invaded Ukraine at the same time. That was our major business partner. We lost our shirt. We lost everything. Got a little bit of money back. Whatever. Uh, and so that was the print shop. We had these Heidelbergs running and humming. Wow. We were printing the Bible Believers Bulletin, wow. seven baptisms. Amen! Guess what that one said? Come on. Uh, Where did the dead go? Come on, I thought somebody uh, was going to What's this one say? Oh, faith, fact, and, uh, fact, faith, and... No, body, soul, and spirit. Come on, brother. <laughs> what does this one say? Oh, Mark of the beast, you know Russian. Amen. <laughs> what's this one say? <laughs> Roots of mythology. Now these are just some. What's this one say? Theological, Theological studies. studies. Amen. So <laughs> these are just some of the books we printed. <laughs> we went back on our second journey, got another tent. This is Jenny who did all the layout, all the format. This brother I want you to pray for him on the left. His name is Sasha Shabunin. The other brother, the second to him, is in Papua New Guinea. But these two on the right are in Seattle. And they have a tourist agency to take people to Israel, which is not going well right now. Um, and uh, Brother Sasha is in the front lines in Ukraine. Amen. He was a 17 years of Church of Christ, and he was in a Bible study of ours, starting to come, and he said, I'm not saved. I was trusting in my baptism. If you trust in anything but the blood of Jesus Christ here this morning, you're not saved. That's right. Brother. Only the blood of Jesus is what saves you. You could be religious your whole life and go to hell. Come on. And that man said, I need to get saved. That takes humility after being religious for 17 years. That's right, brother. And that church got started. That was the Bible Believers Baptist Church, and it's doing strong. That I was able to rate, I was able to make money, and I bought that with some money that I made. And I'm, I'm, I play the market. I lost a lot of money, but um, I don't recommend it. So the Lord blessed. We bought that building for eighty thousand dollars, and that church is there today. And they have their own building. There's the folks on sunnier times before the war broke out. We ordained Brother Velodia Pavlovich. I led him to Christ in his living room once, many, many years ago. He was a doctor all through Africa. He was raised under communism, got saved. Now he's a deacon in the church. Amen. This is Sasha uh, Taranyuk. He's the pastor of the church. And we all got down to Odessa, Brother Chris Roots Church, and ordained him. There he is with his three children, his wife, Oksana. They're living with bombs landing in their courtyard. Now, I know I'm going over time a little bit. I tend to do that. But I want you to understand that we're sitting in a very quiet, peaceable nation. We would be very thankful 
this brother standing there in that church with his family going to school every day, mother terrified, wondering, will a drone hit the school? To lose your kid. So that's a champion for Christ. That's good, brother. That's somebody that's worthy to stand, you know, to yeah. pray for. Yeah. And these, this is the Bible like that. There's an old man just playing Ukrainian music. And people traveling out to the fields every day in Ukraine. Remember Ukraine. Pray for the churches of Ukraine. Drunkards need Christ. Young people, beautiful people. Whether old or ugly or old or young, beautiful, they need Christ. <coughs> God gave us, my wife and I, my boys, a chance to go over there two times, start churches. Our burden is to get back and give track to somebody like her, walking down the street like Rajnovka, and for her to be able to read about Christ. And here, where there's no church within 200 miles, 100 miles, we translated 60 of Dr. Ruffin's to drawing men to Christ and dubbed it with a professional TV station so they could get them on the internet. And they can listen to his preaching, whether they have a church or not. Amen. We said, well, how do we get out there? The internet. And the books. So that's the slide presentation. Let's, I'm not as young as I used to be. <laughs> Let's pray. Amen. Lord, thank you for the Sunday school. I gave a lot of material, so I pray it was edifying to the saints here this morning. And I do beseech their prayers, Lord. Put it in their hearts to remember us, remember Ukraine. And remember that you're coming soon. Help us to do something while it's yet day, for the night is coming when no man can work, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good, good teaching. Amen. <laughs> it's easy in this church. Yeah. Glory to God. This church is easy to teach.